So we had the Seatec show and uh, hi, so who are you? Hi, I'm Frederick Hemmler from Aero 41, Switzerland. And who are you? My name is Katja, I am from the Swiss MFA. And uh, here you're showing a lot of cool Swiss technology, right? You have all kinds of stuff from uh, skis that have some stuff going on in them and uh, drones. Exactly, we want to show that Switzerland is more than chocolate, mountains and cheese. We are one of the most innovative countries in the world. There's actually more technology than chocolate in Switzerland, right? It's like technology is one of the big parts of the Swiss economy. Exactly. We're innovation leaders. We have been for several years, but not a lot of people know about it. And we are here to present in Japan our innovation. We do this with the drone shows because it's uh, pretty interesting for the people to see and there's a lot to uh, explore about it. Nice. So just in uh, two minutes, you'll have a drone show. So we'll, we'll see you in uh, just exactly. a couple of minutes. Exactly. See you soon. Right here. Um, and uh, this one, I've seen it before. Uh, this is not your company, right? But um, it's famous for vertical takeoff and long range drone. Absolutely. It's a vertical takeoff and landing drone. And the uh, drone is able to take off from uh, small areas and to land again in the small areas. And it then moves to a horizontal flight. They use it especially for query, I think, and also for photogrammetry flights. Query? It's a query. query to see, for example, mining industry, for example, to see how they move uh, places, um, sand from one place to the other and to Because as far as I understand, things. and also I think Google tried to do something like this at one point, I don't know if they're still doing it, because it's about combining and, and getting more range. Absolutely, that's what we call vertical takeoff and landing. But the interesting thing with such uh, an object is that you can move also to horizontal flight. Cool. And you work in the drones. You do we, drones, right? We, we do this one. Let's, ch let's, let's check it out. Yeah. This one is a drone for crop protection. We use it in Switzerland, especially on vineyards, to protect the crops. And uh, we work a lot actually on the quality of the application and also a lot in uh, organic treatments. Because uh, for Switzerland, wine is important and sometimes they get all destroyed by bad weather. Not only bad weather, actually you have diseases who are uh, oidium and uh, mildew and uh, we protect actually the vineyards from those diseases with that kind of drone. How do you protect from disease with a drone? You protect from disease, as you can see, you have a tank under the drone. It has a capacity of approximately 16 liters, 20 kilogram, and we put inside the product who will be used to protect the vineyard or the crops. Cool. All right, and uh, right here is going to be demo. I have a question yeah. to show, please. Yeah, I know. Ah. Okay, let's, let's go check it out. Yeah. So let's 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 go right over there. Okay, okay so I'll yeah. wait. Yeah. 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 Uh, let's go right here. The, the drone show is just about to start. Let's go and then let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Welcome, welcome everybody for, to the Swiss Pavilion. My name is Katja and I'm here today with Estelle. Thank you for joining our drone show. You might know Switzerland as a country of cheese, chocolate, maybe you've seen our mountains, but today we want to show you our innovation. We are here with several drone companies and we're going to start our show right away with Windshake. I invite with me on the stage Albrecht to show his wind channel machine Windshake. Hello Katia, thank you. So we're Windshake. We are a company that develops wind test facility, wind and weather test facility. You can see a little demonstrator right here uh, with a group of cameras. So far the goal is really to be able to understand the behavior of a drone in a natural environment. えっと、この
こういう条件を、えー、と再現することができますこの小さなファンがついててこれで、えー、と風を作り出します So as you can see、uh, behind me there is a screen that shows what is、uh, happening in life so Nikola is going to take the drone you can see that it's moving and、uh, there is a machine behind so there is right now a wave you can see Hey Hey, hi.、Uh, can, can you introduce what's happening here? In English, yeah? So,、uh, what's happening here? Whoa. This is very realistic. Is it photorealistic VR 3D、uh, yes, uh, of the whole Zurich? Yes, it's、uh, called photogrammetry. And as you can see on the top, Whoa, it looks like. Whoa, so they've got a really cool 3D camera. Yeah, basically they do, yes. Really cool. And、um, do you develop this? Yeah, we did. So we did the hardware and the software. It was all made in. So you have a. You use a vibe, and then you do wind. You do moving. Fully immersed, and、uh, we don't use the Vive, we use the Vive currently because we don't have a Valve Index anymore. You use what currently? Valve Index. Valve Index? Yeah, from Steam, the new headset. They invented the HTC, but they didn't sell it, they just did the technical part. They analyzed it for four years, and now they brought their own headset. So we use the Valve Index, but we don't have any more, so we use the HTC currently. And uh, there's uh, uh, stuff happening with the arms too, moving here. And basically, everything you do happens like this. And, and that you changes your, your angle and everything? Yeah, that takes the direction. Going down, going up. If one is up and down, and you go a left turn, and vice versa. So, we are in, Tok we're in Japan. Yes.、Um, this is gonna be a very successful move right now. Because this is like the ultimate Nintendo. Almost, yes. It's always the most crowded booth because it's technology that you can touch and feel and try, and that's what people love. You demonstrated this before? No, the first time in Japan, the very first time. First time. So, when can I buy this、uh, Nintendo? Always. <laughs> it's been out for several years, so it's fully commercialized since many years. Uh, museums, zoos,、uh, football clubs, PSG has a machine, for example, watch manufacturers, car manufacturers, insurances, hospitals, we have anyone as a client. And the data of the city is different cities? Yeah, yeah. Much, we have several.、Uh, we have several cities. We can do anything basically. We work with bigger brands like l i k e Geosystems or with Nomoko, for example. So we can do basically any city in the world. Cool. That's really cool. All right. Thanks a lot. Thanks. Thank you, Windshape team. Thank you for this interesting demonstration. Next, we're going to see an innovation called Motion Pilot. 続きまして、えっと、モーションパイロットっていう、えっと、イノベーションをご紹介しますモーションパイロットは新しいパイロットです。Can I make a video here? Can I make a video?Of course.So,、yeah. so, hi, so who are you?Fisher Connectors.And、uh, what does Fisher Connectors do?It is a l a g o d o c o n n e c t i v i t y solution. Fisher is known as the pioneer for possible locking system. Actually, Fisher back in、uh, 1954. Yeah, back in 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 1954. Yeah,
Yeah, correct. If you have a look at the connectivity here, <coughs> that's a circle constructed by four circles. That is a terminal. So it's a, like a plug and play. This particular one is supposed to be like a noise sensor. Suppose that the worker, industrial worker, exposed in a risk of uh, some kind of uh, density of the gas. Well, gas density. Yeah. So this is for working in the uh, at the nuclear plant or a special place. Exactly. Exactly. So people. Uh, be able to monitor density of the gas thanks to the sensor attached to the, this tiny little box, for example. And getting that uh, uh, data, real time transmitting to the data console. Right. And you can have several. Yeah, boom, correct. boom, boom. Yeah. So not only gas sensor, you can also put uh, like a GPS or camera even. And nice. put the uh, real time data transmitted by uh, GPS. Nice. Or 4G or whatever to the data cloud. Nice. And you can monitor it remotely. Cool. This is uh, some of the history starting here, doing all these connectors for all these years, and uh, doing more and more. Correct. So, in the long history of Fisher connectors, in the 65 years, there are only three CEOs. That actually nice. means they are managing business in long term. Nice. So we are thinking the business also in the long term. So actually, longevity is one of the important value for Fisher connectors, supplying products for long term to the customer. Cool. It's important. For Many customers in Japan? Yes, it is growing actually. Uh, Fisher in Japan has just established back in 2017, but we have performed the relationship, partnership with a distributor here locally. They have already serving to the Japanese market more than 40 years. Cool. All right. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thank you. Ah, I'll give you the card. The EDX is here on display in the booth, and if anyone would like to ask me any questions afterwards, so I'd be happy to answer them. Thank you. Thank you, Simon. Thank you from the team from Sensefly for being here with us. Now we're going to fly again. Right. Uh, can can, uh, can you introduce? Uh, sure. So, so this is your drone right here? Yes. So yeah. hi, so who are you? Uh, hi, I'm Simon. I'm the regional manager for Asia Pacific. So I'm, Japan is part of my territory. Um, I'm from Sensefly. Uh, this is the EBX. It's our latest drone. Um, in the 10 years that Sensefly has been operating, we've been making fixed-wing drones like this. And this is the latest version and definitely the best. So. What does it do? Uh, so it flies and gathers imagery for mapping, essentially. And nice. what, what is unique about this is we have seven different sensor payloads that we can interchange. And if I demonstrate... Whoa. They pop in and out. So we can change this one for thermal camera or a multi-spectral sensor for agricultural purposes and things like that. Whoa. What's the range? Uh, the EB is limited to line of sight operations by regulation in most times, but the range is effective out to about five kilometers. What do you say? It's effective out to about five kilometers. Five kilometers range? Yes. How does it take off? Uh, we simply launch it like this. Just throw it? Yeah, throw it. One hand or two? Yeah. Throw it and then... Exactly and that. Very good uh, controls? Very stable. And this is an altimeter? Or what is yes, this? it is. It's a, it's a laser altimeter for... Um, for sensing the ground so that when it comes into land it flares effectively and, and scoots down on its belly. Cool, alright, awesome, thanks a lot. No problem. Let me Flyability. Thank you for your attention. That was our Swiss drone show. There are 17 companies here. Can you stay here? No. Can you, can you yeah. when you bring these guys here? They are yeah. the owners of that white one. Yeah. Which guy? Yeah. Uh, to Hi. Do the drone delivery. Hi. 
Uh, can we do a video about, about your journey? I'll be right back. Yeah? Uh, yeah. Yeah, I'll yeah. be right back. All right, let me come right back. Hi. Hey. hey. So, hi, so who are you? Hi, I'm Jonathan. I'm the regional sales manager for Azuril in, uh, in Asia. And today we are on the Swiss Pavilion, Whoa. Our, uh, our product. Whoa, what is that? So, that's uh, our Azifit Pocket module. Actually, it was created to feed very small part, as small as 0.1 millimeter. Yeah. It was. Yeah. Actually, this is our additive pocket module. Um, it was at the beginning. So it, it, to, it's to a pick and placing those little items. Is it exactly. capacitors? What is that? No, those are uh, actually those are just very small parts that just for uh, exhibitions. But that machine was created to feed very small parts, as small as 0.1 millimeters, for the watch industry. Where, uh, Whoa! Close, uh, it's for the watch. At the beginning, the the, the first purpose, the first uh, industry was the watch industry in Switzerland. Absolutely. So right here, I can see it's taking each of these uh, dispersed feet. things and putting them exactly in there. In the hole, absolutely. How small are these things? This, this are uh, one millimeter tall, and uh, the diameter would be uh, 0 0.3. Okay. So we're talking about Swiss precision right here. Absolutely, that's exactly what we can talk about here. The Swiss precision. Here you have uh, our our camera that is integrated, our vision system that detects the parts that are on the platform. You can see here uh, some green arrows. That means that those parts are in the right position to be picked by our uh, unique Delta robot. So it, it takes a picture, it sees which, which direction they are and where they are, and they can pick the ones that it wants to pick. And then it shakes them again, and some other ones are falling down Absolutely. the hole. So you see that now it's a new picture, and the, the ones in green are the, are the parts that are in the right position to be picked by the robot. So cool. that's how it works. You have a feeding system that is going to vibrate. Then you have the, the vision system that's going to take a picture of the, of the platform and uh, they will send a signal to the robot to pick the part in the right position. Awesome. And what did the watch industry do with this? Uh, actually, we palletize, okay, you can assemble. In that case, we, uh, it's, an assemble, uh, it's, it's a palletizing uh, operation. We do that with diamonds, we can do that with many different parts. Uh, we work for several different industries like watch industry, precision industry, uh, medical industry, automotive or uh, electronics. Cool. What, what, is, uh, what is this one? So actually this is a, just a bigger ASI cube. So uh, here you can see the small ASI cube 50, just uh, the same as are in uh, ASI cube What are these, these items? Those are uh, uh, condensers. Condensers? Yeah. So for very for small, few millimeter? Small. Yeah, so that would be, uh, I would say, uh, one millimeter, two millimeters long. And there's also a thing that slots them in? Or how does it pick, can, and pick so those in, up? In that, in that case, uh, here we have three different sizes, right? So here, for example, you have ASIQ 240. 240 is the diagonal of the platform here, you can see. So that's uh, our best seller, and we can make them move in a through axis. So that's really what uh, I'm going to make you a short demo. We can move that in three axes. Maybe I could, we can show you a quick demo. We can move that in a, in a three axis, and that's why our, our product is unique because our competitors only can make them move. Uh, they only can make them move that way, to the front and to the back. So actually, when you have, for example, the part that is stuck on the side, if you have a robot, he cannot pick it because he will hit the frame. So that's why our system is unique. So you don't need any operator. We, we so you can always put them in the middle. Yes, uh, automatically using the vision system we have up here. So and you just keep vibrating until you pick them all up. Absolutely. So uh, maybe we can have a picture of the of the parts, so right here. Same thing as on the uh, pocket module, you see that you have some parts that have a green arrow. That means that they're gonna be picked by the robot for the next step of the, of the process. Whoa. Another very important point is that we have very flexible. You can, we, you can change that, those plates very easily. So that's for one type, and then... That's your vibration stuff going on there? Yeah, our vibration stuff is here. So we have, it's over here on the side. Here you see, you see the backlight, it's the... How you can how it's the way we can make the pictures from nice, the... Nice, because it's transparent. Absolutely. And oh. then we have another type of platform. You can see how quick we can change that. And in that case, I give you the example. We put those uh, blue uh, plugs and we make them vibrate very quick. And here, the robot can pick them that are in the right position. Let's imagine okay. this one, for yeah. example, or this one. We can have a photo from the vision system. Here we go. And we can see that the ones are in the right position.
Nice. Uh, and for example, if you don't want to pick them like that, like, as we have uh, been saying, like if you want to pick them like that, can you vibrate you... it again? Sure. So boop, it vibrates a little bit, and oh, then a few okay, are okay. ready. So, so these are good to be picked, for example. This one, the robot can pick. This nice. one, this one, this one, this one. As he has, and this one as well. So how there is none that is available in the right position to be picked, the system will send another vibration, and this is how it works. Nice, and, and is there a way that the arms of the robots can also get more and more advanced, and pick things in more different angles and stuff that, like that? Uh, definitely, so for example, that, that was a way to pick it, but if we imagine like using the other platform, we can imagine if you want to pick it in another way. You take the other platform, and in that case, you put as well the, the, the plugs, you make it vibrate. And this one's on the right position, this one's on the right position, and so on. So that's how we can show our great flexibility, our recentering option that is unique. And uh, as we can tune the amplitude, we can uh, deal with very gentle, with very fragile parts, and we can treat them in a very gentle way. That's why we have a lot of success for uh, precision parts and for very fragile parts. Do you have a good market here in Japan? The market is growing very fast. Actually, we are hiring. Uh, uh, we want to hire here because we're growing very, very fast. And um, they are uh, just as, as Swiss. They like quality. Uh, they like precision. You need the best for this? Yes, definitely. The best in the world for this. Cool, all right, thanks a lot. Thank you, thank you for coming. So how was your show? I, I, I saw half of it around. Okay. Uh, during the day, you're doing lots of drone shows? We're doing a drone show every 45 minutes, every hour, yes. Cool. Yes. Uh, there was one more, I think these guys there with the white and blue drone. Uh, maybe we can... Yeah, let's, uh, let's uh, see if they can introduce that one. So... Do you, do you work with this? Yeah? Oh, sorry. I have a journalist uh, yes. doing a live yeah. vlog about... We can do after. Yeah, we can yeah. do it after. Okay. okay, let's do it just after. Okay. 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 Let's go up here. Uh, can we talk about your wind machine? Yes. Yeah? So, um, these are the wind guys? These are the wind guys. Yes, there's yeah. one more back there. Nicola? Yeah. Nicola. And you can... Um, rotate and to blow up and every angle you need. Huh? So, so there's a lot of... Whoa. Cool. Um, so it can generate wind. I feel like uh, it's familiar for me. I'm uh, also from Denmark, so a lot okay. of wind. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Do you want to introduce? Uh, yeah, sure. So yeah. we're wind shape, uh, wind and weather test facility for drones. So, yeah. so there you have a lot of um, CPU coolers. Kind of, really. yeah. Kind of? The, the base is a CPU cooler, but it was a bit changed to fit to our needs, and every fan can be controlled independently to generate exactly the shape of wind you need. And it was quite powerful. I was, I saw a. It so, looks like it was powerful. Uh, yeah. So in this configuration, we can go up to 50 kilometers per hour. But if you can put, like, if you put a convergent, for example, we can go up to like convergent and divergent. We can go up to 180 kilometers per hour. And when you say shape, can you actually point it different ways, or is it just about how many are powered on at specific time? We we can. So I will ask him a, a sinus, for example. All right. So actually, it's wind, so you cannot really see it on the camera. But actually, if you're here, you can really feel. Going faster and slowly. Nice. Cool. So, this is great for drone testing. Yeah, it's great for drone testing because, for example, we have uh, here we have motion capture cameras and um, <laughs> yeah. okay. motion capture, and you can see it moving and everything. So, yeah, as you can see here on the screen, it's a live. Oh, okay. Again. Yeah. It's, uh, you have a live view of what is happening, and we can really track the drone, so I will nice. take this in my hand. Whoa. Whoa. So the what are these cameras? It's Did you do that? Did you? No, so it's done by a company done, uh, called uh, OptiTrack. 
So it's a motion capture system. It's really what you can find in Hollywood uh, for actors and things like Optitrack this. track from where? Uh, they're from the US. US company? It's a US company. So you have four of them and then uh, it's just real-time tracking together with your wind machine. Yes. And you can even have the wind from different places. Yeah, so here you have a very small demonstrator, but it can be a much bigger, for example, we saw the machine at Caltech in the US, it's yeah. 3 meter by 3 meter, so it's literally 10 times bigger than this one. And uh, you can really add like perpendicular walls or you can create a, a circular structure. You, you have kind of no limit in the design. So you have built a bigger one or you just put 10 of them together? So uh, we, we made a much bigger one because the real product you can maybe see behind actually. Yeah, I see, what do I see? I see, uh, what is that? So what you see behind is a structure because the real product, it's a cube of three by three fan. Oh. And we assemble them like Lego. Oh, cool. So that's why the unit is a, a module of three by three fans. But can you also have stronger fans or you just have these for now? Uh, for now, the most powerful fans on the market. Oh, the there most is, powerful. There is nothing more powerful. If you want to have an idea about the power by surface unit there is nothing better than this for now cool so all right so i guess more and more customers right everybody wants to fly perfectly yes it's quite interesting for universities uh, at first because they make a lot of research and development with this but we target as well uh all the manufacturers. companies like dgi and all these guys for example i'm yeah. sure they probably have a i'm not gonna ask but i'm sure they have a bunch there is a lot of companies interested in such technologies and as well governments because we can help them to develop norms and certifications. Does it help to develop windmills or not really? It can. Actually, we communicate only about drones because it's what shows the most our know-how. However, we can make a lot of different uh, applications. We are quite interesting for every product that lives outside, basically. Cool. All right. Awesome. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot to Thanks. you. All right. Let's go down here. So you have a, so you also have that drone company, and you have some startups around here. Yeah. We have startups around here. Yeah. Let's see who is uh, available. Hey. Are you available to give it in? Let me jump in here. Hey. So hi. So who are you? I'm Thomas. And I work for Creo 3D. So Creo 3D There's yeah. a VA, VR, AR, MR. Uh, is it there? Yeah, yeah it is it's actually there. there, visible from the other side. Let me go on the other side. Yeah. So, so what are we, what are we looking at here? Yeah, I can maybe then show you the intro here. Yeah. By the way, I'm also Thomas from Creo 3D. Hi. To make it easy. In this video, it's showing that your eyes are in reality always changing focus, like close nice, and far. Yeah. You know that with your camera. You yeah. can actually try that. Yeah, my camera has big issues with that uh, yeah. because it's a uh, Panasonic. I'm joking. But it's uh, so there's a uh, focusing. There is a depth, optical depth in optical reality, depth. right? In virtual reality, there is no optical depth. In virtual reality, you just see flat image, and this is what makes people feel sick. You know, if you tried virtual reality goggles, you felt as if you had your grandma's glasses, probably. Can you give me the cable? Sorry? Video cable. So, you're connecting... What is this? You it's a camera, because a camera? you could maybe do it with this camera, but it will be probably better with this one. So... Are you showing focus now, or what do you want? I'm showing the reality, exactly the effect which I mentioned. You focus somewhere far, you don't see things close, right? You have to change focus close to see your hand, but then you don't see the things far. That's the reality. And it's optical... Yeah, optical depth. And here... Yeah? We have to behave the same way. Focus, 
vibration when you fly by. What is this frog? You make this? It's a digital image. A digital a image? Yeah. But, uh, so called light field. Can I try to put my camera in there? You can. I, so I, let's I, try. I actually doubt it. Let me try to Okay, so Yeah. You have to get really close. Okay, but so so what's happening here is um, what is your technology in there? So called light field. It's the image behaves like a hologram. It means that it you know generates the light in the same way like the real world does not like a flat screen. Flat screen is flat and will always be flat. So you this, do light field? Yes. So you have uh, just one angle where you are looking? Or do you, do you have different angles? Light field is, is a lot about having different angles too? Or? Yes, here you have the full depth. So whenever there is some you know, pixel close, it behaves as if it, as if it was really close. If it is far, it behaves as, as if it was far. Can I look? Can I look in there? Yes. Can you hold this and point at me? Right, so... What is... Whoa, is there... No. Whoa. So, is there like eye tracking or what's going no. on? There's no eye tracking. No, the image already has a f the qualities of the real when I'm world. Behind the frog, it's focusing where I'm looking. And yeah. when I'm looking at the frog, it's focusing on the frog. But that's your eye. But how is that possible? Well, that's the magic inside. We really recreate the light as if it was coming from the real world. So the, the effect which you see is happening inside your own eye. You know, if you look at a real frog and a real tree, the world doesn't know about you where you are looking, so it doesn't add up. All the effect is happening in your eye. No need for eye tracking. No need for eye tracking. You just have light, I will show you. I will show light you. Light field VR. Yeah, I will show you maybe this trick. So, you know, even the small camera is choosing focus. Now it's on the hand. I click here. Now it's somewhere far, okay? Right. Yeah. So this is how the camera see the reality. And here, do you want to do that? And here, so the frog, it's focused on the frog, but when I click here, it's focused on the brand. And this is just a display? I'm just a little bit like... Uh, it's a, the camera is taking the video from inside. How does it look in there? Can you look or is it your secret sauce? That's a secret, yeah. Your secret, secret. Um, development right here. This is this is amazing. What is this about? This is a, another version, which is much cheaper, but you know, then already kind of better sellable. So no light field. It's, it's a light field also. for each eye. It's a stereo, so you can look inside. Okay. Can you hold this? Yes. Okay, let me. So I focus on the frog. I focus behind the frog, right? Yes. But. Uh, uh, how is this a cheaper version? What's what's happening that's different right here? We have different com we have different components, much more accessible. It, it, I um, could feel this one being more like uh, expensive. Or yeah. something. <laughs> what's the what's the difference implementation here? It's only in the quality of components and of course also the price of the components. But this one is also about size because it's now is in this form factor, which ultimately without change of components fits into this form factor no way how can you put this in there well the same components it's just more difficult to the guys get the... over there right the music guys maybe you yeah. can work with them yeah. so, so how do you what's different about your light engine compared to conventional well it's entirely different <laughs> everything there is everything different so the optics the electronics which drives it the software which drives it but ultimately it's the image it, which contains entirely new feature it has an optical depth fully natural optical depth so the, so the smart glasses i've seen before some that are really cool like the Buzix, are using glp some are using yeah. micro uh, lcd displays uh, oled uh, micro led has also being talked about what do you do do you talk about how you're doing we don't really but it is a modulator so you can imagine you are shining light on some modulator which shapes at the end the, the light field 
But uh, when I'm looking here, if you can tell me again. Also, a long this, it's really, uh, whoa. I see the, the effect. I mean, it's really strong. Um, whoa. Okay, so anybody else doing this? Or are you the only only guys in the world? Who know, who no, there are many companies which do light field, but we are pretty confident that we make by far the highest quality light field. For which is head mounted? Yeah, the near eye projector. Because we can afford it, when you know where the eyes are, we calculate all the, and project all the data only for the eyes, not for the big display. And so, you, can you get this quality down to there? To this? Yes. And how soon? With the five million, one and a half year. <laughs> what do you say? Five million and one and a half year. To five million dollars before production. Swiss francs and one and a half years. Oh, is that, oh, five million pieces. No, five million dollars of Swiss ah. francs and one and a half year. To get it into, you know, prototype of this version, production nice. is of course much more, like 100 to 300 million. Uh, are you a, like a startup? Or yeah, we are basically one and a half year old startup, and these are our third prototype so far. And where are you based? Uh, next to EPFL Innovation Park. EPFL, and then uh, next is potentially changing the world, right? Yes, That's the exactly. Point. A That's year and a half. Do. It's very soon. Before uh, Tokyo 2020 Olympics, right? It depends yes. who comes and does it, well, places a big order. I didn't say it will be on the shelves and you will buy that. We will have the version and then the production is usually additional one year yes. to two years. I guess there's so. a lot of things you could uh, like uh, optimize. Exactly. All right. There is a lot of things to But it optimize. looks really amazing. But we have really cool team for that. We inherited the team of guys from Intel, which did already smart glasses of this size. So. Um, and uh, light fields for other stuff too, or you just work in this direction? It's really near eye, so anything yeah. which is on a head-mounted display. But we are convinced that this feature, and ideally made by our technology, will be in all head-mounted displays in the future, because it's the same change of quality like between black and white and colored screen. It know, was really mind-blowing. I thought that I thought I was looking at a real frog. Yeah, many people think. Or like a strange frog yeah. that you designed. But uh, also, what I understood about light fields is that, for example, when you have an 8K display and you do light field, there's a bunch of QHDs for each different angles. You do something similar where you need a high resolution that gets split out in different angles somehow. No, we have basically one modulator which has a certain resolution, and this resolution you see all the time. It's not compromised. What it basically no, we don't compromise anything. We don't the, divide the, the resolution no, at any point. No, it's like the difference between big screen, which needs a lot of data because you know it shines the light even when no one is looking. So a lot of redundant data. We shine directly to the eye, and we don't need to calculate and deliver more image information than for the flat screen. We don't divide the brightness neither. No brightness. No brightness is constant or something. It's not like you mean a, color resolution. Okay. Color resolution is basically normal RGB color resolution. Of course, kind of the price dictates. If you want it cheaper, you are a little bit compromised the colors. So. so I can see the background and the frog, but how many levels do you have? Or do you talk about uh, the amount of levels? Or? The distances? Yeah, is it like just two or a whole bunch? No, hundreds. 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 Yeah, actually there is around 1,000 depth planes, but most of them are you know closer than oh. you can focus. So Cool, awesome. All right, thanks a lot. Thanks. Thank you. All right. Start up. Yeah, that, that's really another cool. one. Yeah, let's check it out. Yeah. You want to see another yeah. one? Okay. Here is Nomoko. Nomoko does a mirror copy of the world. Nomoko. Hi. Hi. So who are Hi. you? Uh, I'm Nilsson. I'm one of the co-founders um, of Nomoko. Um, and as uh, sorry, I forgot your name. <laughs> Katya already uh, said. Uh, we're producing the mirror world. Uh, mirror. Exactly, the mirror world. And the mirror world is, um, when you look at a digital twin concept, basically an exact replica of the physical world that we live in, um, similar like a digital twin. Oh, that's the one I saw over there, right? Exactly. So, so you scanned the whole city. Exactly. So basically, if you saw Birdly, then you were flying in that mirror world for Birdly. It looked like it was real. Exactly. So this was uh, the whole point of it. Right, um, and um, then we're including not just this, but then we're starting to include other data as well, like weather data here, 
like uh, dynamic elements like cars, pedestrians. Here we replace the advertising, um, so actually you can start advertising in that uh, virtual world as well. Um, because that advertising oh, is you from can. Birdly, so right, I mean, this is then the whole purpose. You could potentially of it. also take the advertising out of the real world. Exactly, so you can potentially take it out, uh, then you can uh, test, for instance, self driving cars, right? So the moment you have a virtual environment that is very close to the physical world, then you can start testing whatever you want. So now you can start to test um, autonomous vehicles, for instance, the whole time, and um, then what you see here is, it, um, is basically then. Um, the skeleton of the city. So this is just the road. This is this all the places the drone has been to capture. So this is just the data. So we segment the data. So with us, every um, everything has its own identity. So every house, every car, every object has an own ID, um, and then you can take everything out and Where, again. And that's what uh, does your drone look like? Because it's got some really nice three D camera or something, right? Yes. Um, so this is confidential. So, I, so I you have your drone design. Yes. That has just uh, the best way to capture the world. Exactly, exactly. And then um, what we're doing is the moment you have this, then you can use it, for instance, for simulation. So if you have autonomous um, car, for instance, that wants to drive, you can test this a million times, and a virtual version can do all the mistakes there uh, before you actually do it. And if you're an architect, you can showcase your building before you actually build it. So it's always about first testing it in this virtual environment before, in the physical world, you start to building it. Nice. Uh, uh, when I saw Nomoko, I thought maybe it's a Japanese company or something. Yeah. What is, what's the name about? Yeah, so it the, the, has nothing to do with Japan, the name. Um, the name comes actually, it's, it's just an invention. So, um, yes. And uh, your data is being used by other things yes. than uh, these guys? Yeah, exactly. So, Birdly, for instance, who are exhibiting there with us, um, they're using the data. Uh, we're now talking with uh, uh, the drawback uh, about that uh, they are using our data as well. So we, we met at the press conference actually for uh, for CTEC. Um, so this is a typical use case that you really start to use our data by uh, different companies. Cool, awesome, and uh, potentially games. Yes, of course. Because the dream is uh, also to, to with this play. amazing VR that I saw there. Yeah, but, of uh, to be inside. Yeah, AR is a, is, is a good example. So AR needs. If you want to have city-scale AR, you need to have the geometry of the city as a backbone. And everyone is talking about an AR cloud, for instance. So you need to have the mirror world is basically the backbone of an AR cloud. So if you want to display how Spider-Man is, for instance, going through Zurich, you need to know the geometry that um, devices like Creal 3D can then position Spider-Man relatively to your eye and to the physical world in the correct place, that it looks real, right? So my exactly. dream for more than a decade and stuff is to see this, uh, you know all these smartphones people have? Yeah. Uh, they can also add real-time information into exactly. the map. Exactly, exactly. And then you have the world being updated constantly. Exactly. And you have a bunch of your cameras and all the drones in the city. Exactly. And they do deliveries, they do all this stuff, but then you constantly update the city. Exactly, and that's what the mirror world is about, and that's basically the infrastructure that we're building that you as a provider can add this data to update it as well, but this needs one infrastructure um, for it, exactly. Nice, so just constantly, you can just go anywhere you want, anytime you want. Yes. But I mean, you still want, uh, you want people to travel, but it's oh, of important course, but that you be able to jump in the world, anywhere yes. you want, anytime, yes. anytime in, the, in the past too. Yes, exactly, so Since once we do this, recording. exactly, once we do start the recording, then you can take, in, in 20 years, you will be able to take back your kids and say, listen, this is how Tokyo looked 20 years ago, or this is how Zurich looked 20 years ago, um, because you have this record of the time, exactly. All right. I'd like to see uh, Switzerland be uh, crazy with the regulations and just say, let's give up this whole thing with privacy, and let's have everybody just be the thing, you know? Uh, and, okay, that's I disagree question. with this one. <laughs> yeah, disagree with that one. Okay. Maybe not. Um, but uh, no, I, actually, what is uh, so very is interesting for Switzerland. The buildings, not the people. No, no. There's no people in there. It's completely empty. So everything which is private information is really important to us. Every car, every pedestrian, every everything which is a number plate is taken out, and basically only an empty city is recorded in that sense. And then the dynamic elements like pedestrians and cars are brought back in based on traffic data and it is anonymized. So there is nice. no uh, data privacy. So here involved. in Japan, uh, how about uh, speaking with uh, cool guys like Nintendo and stuff? And uh, yes. have a Super Mario in, uh, of course. in Zurich? Of course. Or something, uh, 
all that is yes. potentially, I mean, is, is, is potentially possible. We have some exactly. discussions happening. Yes, exactly. So this is um, what we're here for as well. Uh, Japan has a very rich um, history in terms of robotics, in terms of gaming. Um, and for this, we're actually here. That's why we, we go to Japan. That's why we love it here. Uh, very good understanding of it as well. And that's uh, exactly the companies get, that we meet. Exactly you get cities you mentioned. and villages to pay you to scan their city? Uh, the business model is a different one. So the, the business model is really that uh, we have a platform business model. So not one player that pays for the whole data acquisition, but rather that you pay for the consumption. So the more you use it, the more you actually pay for it. So the people that use it. Yes, so if the city is using it, they're paying for it, but it's not that the city per se has to purchase uh, the 3D model. If I was a mayor space. in some kind of village uh, somewhere, I'd be like, hey, come over, I'll pay you, whatever. Exactly. I want to scan exactly. my village. Exactly, because it uh, brings up uh, a lot of opportunities as well, yeah. right? So the moment you have the mirror world of your city available, that brings a lot of opportunities for different businesses, for, autom for, for robotics companies, tourism. for game developers, for tourism, exactly. And the future real estate will be transacted with, uh, with this. How about that? You can see where your exactly. flat is going to be. Exactly. When you want to sell houses, you can actually you visit this with, um, with the local providers of, uh, of um, the Zurich um, flats, yes. But not with Airbnb yet. Real estate uh, industry like Hong Kong or someplace. Yeah, you can they, even... They, they would be like so yeah. interested in this. Yeah, exactly. Um, so you can start even to make calculation based on um, what is the view of your apartment? What is the valuation of the building, or, or the value of the apartment? How many cities have so far? Um, so we started with two cities in Zurich. Uh, we took a long time to get the technology cheap enough that we can really scan it fast. And now we're basically looking at the global expansion, uh, looking at Japan as an expansion market, US, um, Europe. Can you please um, scan New York? Oh, absolutely. Go to New York and get oh, Hong Kong. I like. Hong Kong yeah. is like the highest cost real estate in the world. Exactly. Get Shenzhen because maybe you have some partners there, but I'm joking, maybe not. But maybe you can yeah. uh, do more Switzerland. You're, you're Everybody thinking thinks Switzerland is beautiful, you know. But, sure. but it's, a, it's in the end a small country. To right? Geneva. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, no, we we're out there every day capturing, um, so we're not waiting for. Um, we're basically every day we have, we're out there capturing uh, a next city and we're just accumulating the whole world as we go. Cool, all right, awesome, yes. thanks a lot. Thanks. Thanks, all right. Let me, uh, let me jump, I'll be jumping, jumping this way. Um, and you have some other uh, cool yeah, let's go companies on the, the other side over there. Yeah, there are this some is a more nice startups. Big boost. So, so I saw cool. also Swiss Tech doing stuff at CES, right? Yes, yes. And we which have other places you go? We have a campaign, we go to countries where we think there's an interesting market for Swiss technologies and Swiss innovation. It is the United States, we go to northern countries as well, we will be in Hels Helsinki, we'll yeah. be slash Helsinki, we go to Lisbon for the Web Summit, CES, Las Vegas, we go to Paris for a Viva Tech call, this is the show. Uh, yeah, wherever right. we think there is a market for Swiss innovation. This is the Berlin. Yeah, I saw that. This is, um, this is uh, I did the interview already right oh, here. Okay, okay. So let's go I around have here. A here. Yeah. Hey, can I jump in? Hi, how are you? Hi, so, so who are you? Uh, well, my name is Adrian Kessa, I work for IoT Lab. We are, um, we are based in Geneva and we basically try to bring in the research uh, community's uh, results into the market. And so right now we have several uh, research projects that we're here to showcase. And uh, particularly one of the results of the research community has been the Your Privacy Certification, which is a certification for GDPR compliance. It's going to be uh, hopefully the first certification for Europe. So what do you do with the GDPR? What's so, your role with that? Yes, so basically what happens is that, um, well, in Europe you have really strict uh, personal data protection legislation. And any company that's based outside of Europe, for example, would need to demonstrate that they comply with this uh, regulation before they can access the market. And uh, basically what we do is we certify that the products or services or information management systems of the company is compliant to enable them to easily... What, what does IoT Lab do? What's your day-to-day um, -day kind of like, you, you synchronize the whole um, project or what, what is it? Yeah, so basically we handle over 15 European projects on research. Um, so some of these are there? Uh, yes, so basically these like uh, Anastasia, Synchronicity, uh, Create IoT, and GIoT, uh, 50 Pecoda. So this what is this? Is uh, as well. The, um, yeah. So for example, Anastasia is uh, 
project that uh, seeks to generate a uh, data protection real-time monitoring solution uh, for uh, smart buildings or IoT or um, edge devices and so on. Synchronicity is a project that's uh, aimed in our side to generate uh, privacy by design uh, smart cities solutions as well. And U4 IoT, uh, in our side as well, we have been developing a privacy by design and user engagement uh, solution. All right. So, yes. Cool. All right. Thanks a lot. Thanks. Thanks. And we have to make a little break. Is this Swiss sushi? No. I'm oh, sorry. That is on the food right here. <coughs> That's a great startup. It's a, but he's not here right now. He's having lunch. He's coming in two minutes. Two minutes, yeah. So, Crypto, it's, uh, Let's grab this really right here. Camera. Yeah. Camera cover. This. Camera cover. Nice. 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 There was um, this one I didn't. Yeah. Okay, Robotech. Yeah. Mm. Can you speak to uh, Can you speak to this on video? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So what is this? Uh, a very good press machine. Ah. Yeah. So it's doing like um, yeah. the feet, the traction, and speed up. Yeah. No. yeah. Ah, you like yeah. playing the game? Yes. Yeah. So. All right. Nice. And left. Oh. Oh, yeah. Oh, it's a, it's a, oh. Okay. Okay. All right. So this is the DD Robotech. All right. Cool. Yeah. Let's see it. All right. He's not yeah. here. Can you talk about crypto? Hey. Uh, I'm not yeah. working for a uh, for crypto for oh, okay. startup. You know? cool. I will send a message to. Uh, All right. Now. Yeah. Cool. But uh, so I'll do a separate video about this just yeah, after. Because cool. he's really a cool startup. So how do, how does it work for for you to um, to basically pick the the startups or the companies that go around with you? Is there like a process? You the best? Is a competition something like that? No, we can We choose. We choose a topic for here. It's drones, where we select companies that have an interesting uh, USP for this for the particular market here for Japan. And there are other startups, not only from the drone sectors, that uh, can apply to participate here at the fair. And how long time has this been going on? The hashtag SwissTech. SwissTech campaign is now one and a half years old. And already success stories like. Uh uh, like big uh, something happening? Yes, I guess it's interesting to not only talk about the cliches of Switzerland, like chocolate and cheese and so on, but also about the innovation. In Switzerland, we have so much innovation to show, and wherever we go in the world, there is a lot of interest uh, for the Swiss products because we stand for high quality. Cool.